Jimmy, what are we talking about? What is art? art yeah. One law. <laughs> what is art? Hafiz Karim, also known as the next most famous artist on Instagram, works as an art director in a day. At night and in his free time, he experiments with different forms of digital art, such as reimagining classical figures into everyday Singaporean scenes. The time and energy poured into his passion project has gained him mainstream attention for his artwork, a feat that can be elusive for Singaporean artists. I mean, it's, it's very different, even though they're both creative jobs, right? I kind of need both of them. I need one, I need a day job to be creative in a, like a, in a lucrative way, like to earn, to earn the money. <laughs> and then I need it, I need the night, night time to do my artwork just to get my ideas out. And I guess it's more personal, right? The it's more personal. I mean, I mean, like I don't have anyone critiquing my work or getting client approval. So the art is mainly, uh, mainly for me to just my own, for my own soul, I guess. When do you start this, uh, the, the next most famous artist anyway? The next most famous artist started um, during my agency job. Like there was this vibe of always wanting to get more views, getting viral. I decided to create this um, moniker or this alternative persona just to poke fun at how we are constantly being, constantly needing this sense of viralness and, and commenting on social media. So it was mostly for that. And since I can't be like the most famous artist, I decided to be the next one, you know? You go to East Coast Park often? Never. You never been to East Coast Park? I told you I've been staying at home for a month, right? Well, what makes you think I look like a person that goes to a beach? <laughs> it's quite crowded, eh? You are buying back, is it? Yeah, buying back to the car. Because I think it's got space like that. Yeah. Okay, uh, what's your name? Uh, Olivia. Olivia? Yeah. <coughs> okay, that will be... Uh, 37? 37, sorry. Yeah, so you can come back around 5-10 minutes. 5-10 minutes. Okay, thank you. Yeah, nice to meet you. Uh. Thank you. Ice lemon tea. Or homemade or get? Huh? Homemade. And then two sugar cane juice with lemon. Previously, long time ago, my family would just um, dig up um, cockles oh. from like oh, when it was low tide. Right. That was that was a good memory. That's a lot of sati. We don't spill anything. You won't. So it all started out during my masters in Asian history um, seminar, where we had this introduction of all the uh, Western art history period from beginning to end. So during that boring, I'm so sorry, Professor. <laughs> during that boring session, um, they, they show these classical figures and then it just occurred to me that even though they're from a different culture and a different time zone, they are still people with the same kind of interests, desires or whatever you have. So it just, I just want, to, there's this what if they were in a different setting and then what if they're in the Singapore setting? So what would they be doing? You know, so I thought that they could be this sort of modern day influences from the classical period. You know, that could be like a fun thing. Art doesn't really have to be serious all the time. So that's why I feel that I can play around with like different styles. And like that meme thing is actually really fun to make. And I like how, I like the reception of it. And I like that people are telling their own stories based on that one single artwork. Do, do they? They do like when they reshare it, they repost it, right? They are, they are almost giving a new life to my artwork based on their own experiences. When you think about it, when it comes to TikTok and all that, there's this uh, appropriation culture going on, this remix culture. You know, so I feel that I'm actually that's the language of the now social media, and I think that's why people people actually relate to it. One thing I tend to do is to explore what other artists are doing. I think that's like a good starting point. That's why I think I studied art history because I'm learning of art, what other artists are doing and how they are reflecting on the times that they were living in. And then it then occurred to me, okay, I should be creating art that is reflecting the times that I'm living in. I think in general, to make it as an artist is that your voice be heard. 
I think that's like the first step that's quite difficult for artists to make sure that people know about their work and have influence, you know. Mm. Like you are only one voice, but it, to be able to get people to agree with your work, create discussion, create a discourse, I think that's, that's like quite powerful. If people don't talk about your work, that's considered a failure? Not failure, don't say failure, that's so, that's so harsh. <laughs> No but I would say that when you're creating art and you have an, you have like a voice, don't you want it to be heard? When does it become um, a bad discussion? I think I don't think I don't think any discussion is a bad one mm. because you actually that's where the boundary pushing happens. Mm. You're like testing people's like comfort zones, mm -hmm. and you want that to happen. There was a time where I, I thought to myself, wait, I'm not really an artist. I'm just like doing like memes or like artwork. But um, the most famous artist, Matthew Moore, just really solidifies that you don't really need to have an art education to, to be an artist. You just need to be able to have confidence in the ideas that you have about the world and share them without fear. I think that's like really one of the big things of becoming an artist and one of the privileges, actually. So anyone can be an artist? Huh? Anyone can. But I think there's this fear, especially in our society, of like becoming one, I think. Do you think especially in Singapore? I know, yeah. So it makes you feel happier to create art, right? Yeah, I guess so. Some processes, it's more like I need to release something. Like, my dad passed away when I was secondary four. I had no one to talk to, but I had art instead. You know what I mean? That's what it is to me. Right. It's like a, it's like a need for me to just express something that I can't really say. I'm not a good talker, obviously, but like I, I feel that there's this convent, confessional style when it comes to art where you can just be free and like there's, there's no fear. That's yeah. what I, that's what I feel that I tend to miss out in life, and art helps me to do that. Actually, I was thinking the same because it's so hard. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. No, my life, okay. I feel like there's less people here in this part of the school, but I'm, I'm less anxious. Now. Yeah, this one was super crowded. Can you show me how you create your art? Yeah. So like the first thing actually make sure is that the perspective is is like even like it's like consistent, the lighting is also consistent. And then I'll just do like uh I'll just do Photoshop. So uh, things to take note is like you know the fur here and the yeah. hair here, like like sometimes like old paintings there's these cracks mm -hmm. like you can see here. Yeah. Like I have to patch it a lot of it up because like old paintings actually has a lot of cracking oh, because okay. it, it's it's old and yeah. oil painting just cracks up over time it's uh -huh. based on whatever atmosphere or whatever. So I have to make sure it I patch it up so that you don't when it's printed or right you don't really see it. So that's like that took a while. So it's like you conserve them digitally. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> so the, the the scene I was doing uh, creating here was like you know whenever there's like a rainy day that you you, you tend to like just rush out of the bus. So mm. when I look at this painting, that's like the first thing that came to my mind. They're probably mm. like running off away from the storm. Mm -hmm. And then I just think of like locally what would happen and this was the scene that came out, came in my head. You did some highlighting on her and her feet also. Right? Yeah, so, whenever I do this I have to make sure that um, the lighting from the photograph matches the lighting on in the painting. So mm -hmm. I'm like I just add highlights here and there, shadows just to make sure it just blends in seamlessly mm. so that people when whenever there's like creating like a new scene if you if there's an error people catch it very quickly. Mm. So it's like I try my best to make it as as like seamless and clean as possible so people focus more on the story than the execution. Mm. The one problem I have right is like there's not a lot of Asian art history for me to use. Mostly because firstly it came so late and also a lot of Asian works are very modern, abstract. Mm -hmm. There's not a lot of realism there. Like and the, the Japanese and, one, you said. Yeah, like yeah. the Japanese one, and also from our culture, you don't get it in the public domain. It's all kept in like national uh, museum. You can't use. I can't use right. it freely. I would love to have one art, like Malay artist, you know, that mm -hmm. I can use. What do you hope to achieve while doing this? I want to be part of art history. 
part of like art part history. Of the, part of the canon, you know. Uh. Like, the canon of art history, like you're written in the books and all that. So people study about you and stuff. I know, that was so cool. <laughs> oh, that would be so cool. Like, people write academic essays about my work, you know. And when I'm, my dad passed away as well, it was also like this uh, driving factor to actually express it. If not, I'll probably be suicidal. I'm pretty sure. Really? Like, because I knew art saved my life. Oh, really? Yeah, definitely. Like I had like I make sure that yeah yeah I'm, I'm definitely sure that I'd save my life because if not I had no outlet I wasn't talking to anyone about my dad's passing at all oh. I don't think so and I'm very I keep to myself a lot mm. yeah so I knew that affected a lot in terms of the the emotional outlet mm-hmm. I feel like I learned a lot today I hope you do yeah. my gosh of what I'm doing next, like, it's hard to tell because I'm I'm still figuring out as I go. Mm-hmm. I'm still testing softwares and all that. So, you know, things are changing, it's always evolving, you know. Yeah. I get excited about all the, all of these new things, you know. Mm-hmm. So, just stay tuned, I see on my, watch my Instagram space. <laughs>